I'm Nate Burkus, and this is how it got better. So my parents divorced when I was two. They were living out here in California. My mom got remarried and moved me to Minneapolis. My dad stayed in California and started another family as well. Childhood in the Midwest. Wow, it was definitely a different time from now. My parents are not conservative people. My mom is an interior designer. Um, she had gay friends growing up. But I remember thinking as a kid, I better figure out how to hide the fact that I'm gay because it's not gonna go over well. It's just there's no, there's no good way that that is going to land in this little suburban Minneapolis area where I was from. There's a filter that you have as a gay child. It's this filter where before you speak, before you move, before you act, before you walk, before you run, before you go out for that team or admit that you don't want to go out for that team, you think, I've got to put this through a sifter and how will this be received? And secrets, as we know, beget secrets. And secrets also beget shame. And I think when you carry around shame, you have to have a skill set in order to, do, to, to deal with that. Part of that skill set is lying constantly to everybody around you so that you fit in. And the result of that is disliking yourself. Don't Ask, Don't Tell was an edict that Clinton had, had said about gays serving in the military. It meant that gays could serve in the military, but they couldn't talk about it. So really, what is that? That's like a half freedom. And in the 70s and 80s growing up, I kind of call it the Don't Ask, Don't Tell period because it just wasn't spoken about. Boy George, George Michael, they weren't out. There were no gay heroes. And I remember um, kind of equating the AIDS crisis to not wanting to come out because it was sort of like a shoe in Like, you know, like if you, if you were gay, then you were gonna have AIDS. It was really terrifying to be a kid and know that you're gay and know that people are dying of this gay cancer. No one knew how to cure it. People were losing people left and right. The creative communities were decimated. You know, if you think about the paintings that were never painted, the films that we never saw, the music we never heard, the, the, the rooms we never saw decorated, the homes we never saw built. And I internalized that fear for a long time. 1991. Um, I'm a freshman in college and I'm totally out to my family and friends. My father was the last person that I came out to. My dad and I are very close. We have a very similar personality. We laugh at the same movies. We talk about the same stories. We get along. We think our thought patterns are very similar. I adore my father. And I went to him and I said, Dad, I, I want you to know that one of your sons is gay. And he turned to me and he goes, which one? I'm like, Dad, it's, it's me. And he looked at me and he said, I just don't understand. Why would you want to be gay? Why would you make this choice? It doesn't make sense. You could do anything in the world. It's gonna be so much harder for you. You're gonna miss out on having a family, on, on getting married. And because that was his reaction, it created such a distance between him and me. And I didn't know how to make him understand until many years later, he came to Chicago and the two of us sat in an airport bar and I said to him, you know, Dad, I was born gay. And I understand that no parent wants a challenge for their child. But the truth of the matter here is that unless you can understand that I was born gay, we will never be close, ever. And he said to me, I've never thought about it that way. I love you, I respect you, and you're my son, my first son. If you tell me that you were born that way, that this wasn't a choice, then I accept. And our relationship changed that day. It was 2004 and I was in love with a South American photographer named Fernando Benguichea, who is unlike anybody I had ever encountered in my entire life. And we went to this, to, to Sri Lanka and we were sleeping about 50 meters away from the, um, from the sea in a wood shack and um, we went to bed um, on the 25th and woke up 
um, drowning. The tsunami forced me to confront every single thing I'd ever been afraid of in one split second. Dying, because I was drowning. Losing somebody that I loved more than anyone in the world, because Fernando never made it home, and his body was never found. And here I was with dead bodies floating by me and watching mothers lose their babies and families ripped apart. And I realized that I had a responsibility to not only Fernando's memory, but to the souls of all those people who didn't come home, that I was going to live my life and I was going to live it fully. One of the things that I was terrified after Fernando had just died and I spent 10 days looking for him in, in Sri Lanka and then finally realized I was going to have to come home alone was would I ever find that again? Would I ever find that level of connection again? Would I ever feel that comfortable with another person again? I spent years dating the wrong people, really just trying to replace what I had lost. And when I met Jeremiah, we both were at a place in our lives that we were ready for this. We're on the verge of having our first child together. Um, we can't wait. If you take where my life is now and you take it back to that bar where I sat with my dad when his flight was delayed and he was so worried that I would never have a family, that I would never have children, that I would never have any of the things that he could understand, he just bought us a stroller. If I think back to the kid in my childhood bedroom, hysterically crying, liking a boy, knowing it would never happen, being bullied, being terrified to get on the school bus because this huge guy, I mean, I was this big when I was in elementary school. And I, I remember just thinking like, what, I can't, how am I supposed to get through this? But even in my darkest moments, I just knew that it would get better. We're all different. Straight, gay, doesn't matter, everybody is different. But in the long run, our differences are what actually make us so exceptional. I am married, I am having a baby. I never thought that was gonna happen to me, but it did. And the best part is I got out of my own way to let it all happen. So give yourself a chance. I know, I see you. Oh oh. <laughs> this is why the vet yesterday was like, does he go to daycare or anything? And I'm, we were like, no. Um, there's these like doggy french fries in the in the cabinet under the bar sink. You want a treat? No. Yeah. No. You want a treat? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>